I have 630. I see that we have a quorum of the city council in the room. So I will call the meeting of the city council, city of Hillsborough to order. First item up on our agenda is our consent agenda. And on our consent agenda today, we have four items. First is vouchers totaling $118,836.80. Did everyone receive copies of the vouchers? Were there any questions regarding the vouchers? We have minutes from the March 19, 2024 meeting. Did everyone receive copies of the minutes? Yes. Were there any questions or corrections to the minutes? We have CDBG and HEAL grant vouchers totaling $13,946.31, which for our purposes is a pass-through, but did everyone receive copies of those vouchers? Yes. Were there any questions? Yeah. And finally, we have an appointment of Kevin Brandt to a two-year term on the Planning Commission. Any questions regarding that appointment? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Councilman Wilkins moves. Councilman yeah. McCarty seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are now to our first opportunity for public comment. Do we have anybody online or in the room that would like to address the council at this time. Okay, we will close that first public comment opportunity and we'll move right into our business items. The first item there is consideration of a fleet management proposal from Enterprise Fleet Management, Mr. Stiles. I'm going to recuse myself from this okay. business discussion. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this is just a continuation of our conversation about the enterprise fleet management proposal. Um, at the last meeting, we had kind of talked about meeting with uh, both Midway and and Ford to see, you know, what uh, what their perception of it was. I wasn't able to get them all in the room at the same time, but I did get a chance to talk to both of them uh, with Michael Hagen and Terry Hagen uh, over at Hillsborough Ford, and then also uh, Gabe Gehring, who's the manager over Midway, all the Midway Motors actually. Um, you know, I think their only concern with this was kind of what I voiced last time was that they wanted to make sure that the lease was equitable and fair to the city. Uh, they didn't want to see the city getting taken uh, for a ride on that. Uh, both the dealerships would take delivery of these vehicles, make sure that they're marked. That was very important to them, that they were marked with either Hillsborough Ford or Midway Motors. Uh, it's free advertising for them, which said that's part of the deal. Um, you know, when the, and they talked about, we talked pretty extensively about what it's like when you bid in a public bid. Um, and Gabe was pretty upfront and said that, you know, most of the time when we, when Midway bids a, a public vehicle, like a police vehicle or something, they oftentimes lose money on those because uh, they're just trying to get the business. Um, and so those are really tight bids typically. So they're not really making a lot of money on those transactions where they make their money is on maintenance, which would be, of course, part of this. Um, and so... Uh, the maintenance and warranty work was something that they thought would be a pretty pretty good situation for them. Uh, they also would get delivery fee, which is five five hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on kind of how it's set up. So, um, both the dealerships kind of understood this and say it was sort of a really one of the only viable options for the city, aside from putting out a large amount of money to replace the fleet at one time. So, um, they didn't harbor any ill will against the city if we chose to do this. I think that was important for everybody to really be comfortable with that. I uh, didn't really seem to have any issue with that and at the end of the day. Understood what, what we were talking about and kind of where we were going. Um, so the, the financial impact, this these are, these are kind of the initial agreements. We don't actually have the vehicles identified yet. That would kind of be the next step. We would sit down and say, all right, here's what we want to do. Here's, the, here's kind of how this is going to work. And you'll have that another opportunity to look at that once we get to that point. Um, and then we'll have... Uh, that, that'll be the next piece. And then the actual payments wouldn't begin until vehicles are delivered sometime probably in the summer. Um, so we've got it negotiated out and I think everything met, met all your legal obligations. According yeah, to it, it. yeah. We, I mean, we've worked with this company in the past. We <laughs> yeah. uh, worked out the, the details of the changes to the contract that are necessary for, for Kansas to protect your interests. And they, took that same form that they have in the past, which is in your packet. So we're comfortable as far as that goes. Okay. Uh, and then Ken Olson is online. If uh, you have any questions from the enterprise side, um, I, our recommendation, I think if, you, if you're if you ready to move forward with this, you feel comfortable with this, I think it's probably one of the 
the most viable options for replacing the fleet, considering the situation we're in with the fleet. Um, so I, I, you know, I think we ought to ought to move forward with it if you guys are comfortable with it. So to make sure I'm clear, the dealerships here in town would still get the maintenance work mm -hmm. just through this. Yeah. Agreement. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. They would service all the warranty work. Most of it would be under warranty. Uh, yeah. yeah. Motion, Unless there's any further questions or comments, I would accept a motion to uh, to approve. Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We would uh, approve the master agreement and maintenance agreement with all the proposed addendums. Oh my God! Motion. Okay, Councilman McCarty moves. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Councilman Wilkins seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So, Ken, we're moving forward. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for your time and really looking forward to getting this partnership started. Thank well, you. Just, just so you know, all the hard work is now on you. We did <laughs> our part. <laughs> That's all right. I, I'll take that. I okay. certainly. All right, very good. Well, we're looking forward to it. And I know the uh, the uh, city staff and crews will be looking forward to getting some new vehicles. And so we're excited about that. So thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. mm -hmm. Okay, would, uh, I will go get Mr. Um, Councilman Blake. Blake. Well, I'm in. <clears throat> Next, uh, I think we'd like to... Um, move up the uh, consideration of the request from this and that farms for economic development assistance, Mr. Stiles. Yeah, so I've been talking with Mike Morales here, who's the owner of this and that farms. This is Mike, say hi, Mike. <laughs> um, so we, you know, we've talk, been talking with him. He's building a new building. He's moving his business in uh, from, from the rural area of Marion County into our business park, uh, which we're very excited to have. He does a lot of work for the city um, and does a lot of work, I think, for everybody. You seem pretty busy, Mike, uh, which is good. That's a good thing for you. Um, and so Mike and I had kind of talked about you know, one way we could potentially help uh, economic development-wise would be to help with his culvert situation. Um, the piece of property that he has is sort of on the corner of, um, what is that, Santa Fe and uh, Commerce, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's an unpaved corner, so we have open ditches that run through there. Um, and so one one thing we could do, uh, a tangible investment we could make would be to, to purchase that culvert for him and some of the materials for the installation. Um, so Mike and I kind of got together and we came up with a, the official ask of $4,956.30. Um, and, you know, as far as benefits go for us, obviously Mike's bringing his business in town. Uh, it's going to have a building on there, which eventually will generate some property tax for us. Um yeah, there's parking, storage, I think five employees. Is that right? Currently, we have three full-time employees. Okay, three. three Four, employees. including myself. Four. Okay, got the right. Well, I hope you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And Sometimes. Potential, <laughs> potential, hopefully, for some more. I think your business is, you know, it's going. It's growing. So, um, you know, we also received some utility things there. But I would note that the um, industrial park is not a city electric utility that's run by uh, Everdeep. So, um, you know, we've got, I think there's pretty strong potential here. Mike's not asking for anything else. He's not asking for industrial revenue bonds or anything like that. So, uh, this seems like a pretty reasonable request. Uh, and we've actually done this before, not too long ago in 2022, we provided similar assistance when countryside feed came in and they were doing their expansion. Uh, they did, we, we paid for part of the culvert, uh, and sort of the entry point there on industrial. So, uh, we've got kind of a history doing that. I feel like it's a pretty tangible investment. It's got it's a thing we're doing to help. It's not like um, sometimes you do economic development incentives or job creation. And some of these things, you're just giving people cash. Uh, this is actually a thing. Uh, and this will help Mike do his business. And so uh, we're recommending that you move forward with it. If you do want to do that, um, you come out of the industrial fund, which is what we use to pay for economic development activities. Uh, there is enough in there set aside for uh, what we basically call project money. Um that's kind of how it's in the budget. So there's plenty there to do that if that's something you wanted to do. Um, yeah, and I, th I think this is a pretty tangible investment and, and a, a pretty pretty good move to help a business that in a, in a way that makes sense for us. 
questions for Matt or for Mr. Morales? I, I uh, would have uh, just one question, and that is, is the city purchasing the culvert or are we writing a check to Mr. Morales? We'd be reimbursing him. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, hearing no questions, uh, I'd be looking for a motion to approve the expenditure of $4,956.30 uh, for uh, purchase of culvert pipes uh, and materials from Dalton Construction related to the installation for the project at This and That Farms in Hillsborough Industrial Park. I'll make a motion. Councilman McCarty moves. Second. Councilman Drigger seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Morales. We're excited to have you in yeah, the town. Park. And we appreciate the support that you give the city with the repairs and things that you do for us. So that's much appreciated. And I appreciate as well. everything from the city side. <laughs> sure. I really do. I mean, it's we wouldn't be where we are today without the community. We really would. So right. Appreciate all that from you guys. You bet. Thank you. Thanks for coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move back to item two now, which is the consideration of a purchase of a Funbrella replacements, Funbrella replacements for the DDFAC. Yes, sir. Uh, Funbrellas. Yes, the uh, Funbrellas are the straight shade structures at the, the water park or the uh, swimming pool, excuse me, uh, the Dolores Dalkey Family Aquatic Center, I guess I should say. Uh, Anchor Industries is the original supplier of these, uh, so this is this all fits into the equipment that we have. That's kind of a big piece there. Um, so these got destroyed in a windstorm last summer. We weren't real sure what we were going to end up with. This was a separate windstorm than the one that destroyed the uh, the airport, mm -hmm. and so we have we would have had a second ten thousand dollar deductible in order to do this. So we didn't file insurance on it. Uh, we were we didn't think it was going to quite hit the ten thousand mark, and it was actually ended up being eleven thousand, so it was a little more than we thought. But uh, we still probably wouldn't have filed for that because I don't really need that on our insurance. We've already had enough going on that. So, um, so what we need to do, what we did was pull those out last summer, and we were kind of scheduling them for this spring to do replacements. So this is the, this is that time to do that. We're already uh, knee deep in preparations for the pool already, believe it or not. So. Um, yeah, so what we're looking for today is uh, Funbrella, Funbrella replacements, two of them, uh, at $11,054. Uh, typically, what we've been doing at the pool is using the local option sales tax, which paid for the pool, uh, for pool maintenance things. This is what we would do with this as well. Uh, there's 360000 I think, in there right now. Um, so, the, and there's, there's enough set aside for capital projects and improvements to pay for this for this year. Uh, something we were kind of planning on doing. It's a little more than we thought, but um, yeah, that's just kind of how things go sometimes. So uh, we are looking for uh, approval for this purchase of the foam umbrellas from Anchor Industries uh, at $11,054 plus the freight. They don't have the freight on there yet. So that would be important to add that. Question. I do have a, just a quick question. How old were the old umbrellas? They were original to the, facility so that would be oh, quite a while. 25 years yeah. 30 years okay ago. yeah so then these should be probably a bit more durable and i hope so yeah yeah, so yeah these are actually uh so i guess i should back up the ones that blew out there's there were two different styles in there and one of them is ridiculously difficult to put up um so we went to these would be the replacements that are much easier and much safer to put up so uh yeah i believe they are stronger and have a higher wind rating um, okay. So hopefully we don't have this problem again anytime soon. Yeah. I'm trying to take it. These are more fun than a regular umbrella. <laughs> yeah, correct, sir. Thank you. So I had to check. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just a clever name. They are more. So along those, along the lines, I think of where Ronald was going, um, in terms of preparing for a future wind event, if if there's wind in the future or the forecast suggests high winds. How easy is it going to be to to lower these so that we're less likely to have them, yeah. you know, twisting and turning in the wind? So these are pretty 
permanently set once you get them up. They're not easy to take down. Uh, that is, there's just none that are that size that are easy to do that with. Gotcha. So, uh, these are wind rated, I think, I don't know if it's on here or not. I was thinking up to 45 mile an hour winds. So, um, yeah. that's a regular day. It's, yeah. like, it's sort of like an average day, right? Yeah. Um, I think Jane called it. Maybe it was a little bit more yeah. than that. I don't remember. That was 45, but, uh, these are higher rating than the ones we're replacing. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the purchase of Funbrellas for the Dolores Dalkey Family Aquatic Center in the amount of $11,054 plus freight. Councilman McCarty is in a motion making mood today. So well, I want people have fun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second it, that. Second by Councilman By. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's oh. move to our final, our two items in our business. Uh, next is a consideration of a bid, bid from Boats Crushing for Concrete Crushing. And uh, Mr. Stiles, I'll let you start. Yeah. Mr. Dalkey needs to. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what we did, we did this back in 2021. Uh, we had boats come out and do the uh, crushing for that. Actually, they were the second place bid. We had another company that was originally going to do it. Uh, they had a bad experience at the county level, and then um, basically we said, no, we're not going to have them do it. And so the county got to have that one first before we got our experience with them. Uh, boats does a great job. They um, come in, they're, they're professional. They have mostly wire-free, you know, uh, when they get done, it's it's pretty clean stuff. So uh, we're pretty comfortable with them. Uh, reason why we're doing this, we have a big pile right now. And also we have a need for the upcoming city street projects, Adam Street. We're going to use this material to put an Adam Street project. Uh, and then most likely in the Lincoln Street and the um, Wilson Street project. Yeah. So this is material specifically, well, specifically for them. That's what, it's what's going to be used for primarily. Um and then we, you know, we've got this pile, so it's it's a good opportunity to do that and save some money on the actual uh, cost. So, uh, Dale put together a couple bids here. Um, these are actually on a tonnage basis, so these are estimates, but uh, we feel fairly comfortable. These are pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we had uh, boats come out and do it again, and then uh, another company, Heartstone. I'm not real familiar with Heartstone. Is it where are they at? Us? They're out of Wichita. Wichita. Okay. Well, which and Kansas City, but most most of the other which. Okay, um, so you can kind of see what their price is. You know, boats was cheaper uh, per ton, and then the mobilization was also a lot cheaper. Um, they do have a, a charge there for munching, so that's that's sizing uh, piece larger pieces into smaller pieces that we can get um, size to different sizes for that. Um, that's not included. Well, it, as presumably it's included in the bid from Hardstone, but it's not broken out specifically. So, um, you know, they actually came in pretty close together, 68,100, uh, estimate from boats. And then Hardstone was 72,400. Um, again, we've had a pretty good, pretty consistent, uh, and good relationship with boats crushing. Uh, boats has several different companies. Boats Vargas helped us out a lot on roads and streets and other things. And Boats Construction built the bathroom. And you know, Boats and Al Boats had a lot of businesses. So uh, this is one that has sprung out and it's, it stands on its own now. So um, and part of how you know we're, we're going to be using this material in in the street projects, and so that would be able to, an eligible cost that we could use the bond proceeds to pay for some of that. So. Um, that that would be kind of how we would approach this. I I would assume most of this is actually probably going to end up in the street projects. Just a good chunk of it, yeah. Is. Based on how those and depends, I guess, on how they end up getting designed. So, uh, so what we're looking for today is I, I well I I turn it over to Dale. Is there anything you'd like to add to the conversation? No, I mean that's pretty much what you said. Pretty <laughs> straightforward. Yeah, I don't know. We got a large pile of concrete and. Uh, rubble that is that uh, needs to be crushed and um it speaks volumes for what's happening around hillsboro what's being tore down i mean it you know that means there's something else usually being built in its place and things are getting changed out old for the new and so um 
I don't know, it's recycling in a large scale. Before we started crushing years ago, this stuff would have ended up in a creek somewhere and the creeks were getting full. So <laughs> that's how we do it now. Now we put them under the street. Yep. <laughs> Any questions, comments? Hearing none, I would accept a motion to approve the bid uh, for votes construction in the amount of $68,100. Councilman Wilkins moves. Is there a second? second but. Councilman By seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we will now on our, be on our final business item, which is Ford invoices totaling $335.20. Mr. Stiles. Yeah, uh, one of them was for annual fire truck maintenance, and the other one was for Ben's truck, um, 2010 Silverado. He had some, had some work done there. Um, yeah, I had a sand. I actually have a tote, it looks like, uh, into the shop. So uh, total there, again, is $335.20. Any questions? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to authorize payment of the Ford invoices totaling $335.20. Councilman McCarty moves. Is there a second? Councilman Wilkins seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those abstaining? Abstain. All those opposed? The motion is uh, approved and the invoices will be paid. So we are now, how are we doing for time? Good, good to go. We are now going to move to a land bank meeting. And so I will call a meeting of the land bank, city of Hillsborough to get to order. First item up under our land bank meeting today is approval of the land bank minutes. Did everyone receive copies of the minutes? Yep. Were there any questions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Make that motion. Councilman By moves. Is there a second? Councilman McCarty seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The uh, business today for the land bank is approval of vouchers totaling $17,732.02. Mr. Stiles? Yes, sir. So, yeah, the voucher list that I have attached in here isn't quite right because we're the Marion County taxes. We're not paying those yet. We're actually paying the Mahaney roofing uh, voucher, which is in there as well. Uh, it's seventeen thousand four hundred for the Mahaney roofing. We actually approved this many, many back in September. Oh, yeah, September year. of last year. So this is to fix the roof at AMPI. Uh, uh, you know, and it, it had, that roof is has still continue to be trouble. Uh, I've had them out looking at it and it's got different leaks now. And so uh, it's one of those things that it's a never, never ending gift with the AMPI building. Um, th they, we need, we need to pay them because they have done the work that they have promised to do. And there are areas which they did fix and it is doing just fine. Um, there are probably some more areas that need to be fixed. Uh, and they suggested a total roof replacement, which was 60,000 plus. Uh, which I'm not comfortable saying, yes, let's do that uh, for that building. Um, it's just the gift that keeps giving, I guess, is what I would say. So the the vouchers today are actually the 17400 with uh, Mahaney and then uh, Overhead Door Company. They came out and fixed the door for us, $332.02. So the total there is $17,732.02. So we are not approving the second half. No, not the taxes at this okay. point. We'll come back to that later. All right. Any questions? Would somebody make a motion to approve the land bank vouchers totaling seventeen thousand seven thirty-two oh two? Councilman By moves. Is second. there a second? Driggers. Councilman Driggers seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. And we are. We have quickly moved to your city administrator's report, Mr. Stiles. Yes, sir. Uh, after the last meeting, Gorgeous Dairy talked with them and the sanitation staff. We've opted to end their lease. Uh, they weren't super pleased with that. Um, they really don't use that building, but they've got a lot of stuff stored in there. Uh, so we felt like it was a better use for us to use it. Um, and so 
we came to an agreement with them and they're going to be out by September 1st. So that's how we're going to do it. And then sanitation will take over that space. I will just add to that that I had a, also had a conversation with Mr. Gorgeous. He reached out to me while I was traveling last week and I did have a conversation with him that pretty much paralleled exactly the conversation he had with Mr. Stiles. So <laughs> he let me know that he wasn't happy uh, about our decision. I did explain to him that the city's needs had were continuing to evolve. And, you know, we were tasked with doing what's in the best interest of the city as a, as a whole. And I apologize that, you know, he felt like he should have been contacted earlier. And I apologized if that was a problem. But uh, I just said we needed to move forward. And he understood and, and he appreciated the extra time to get his things out. So. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, uh, Mennonite housing meeting. We had that on the 21st of March. Uh, talk about the Orchard Ridge project. We had a handful of people there. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, they were able to answer a lot of questions. We got to see kind of the layout for the first time. Uh, I think it's kind of the working layout and the floor plans for their duplexes, which was pretty cool. Um, had some pretty co positive comments at the end. Uh, I know there was one person there very skeptical uh, of our partnership, or, you know, choosing a partner and then you know, low income housing to think of that. But he was very complimentary at the end of the day. He thought mm -hmm. that we had made a good decision on who we were picking and, and using. So um, we should have some more information. I was a little bit off on my dates originally. The uh, application is due in May and they have a decision this summer. Uh, but they talk like if it got approved that they would be opening units up that following summer. So pretty quick turnaround. Um, also had the Building Bridges program at the um, high school auditorium on March 25th. Uh, Melinda Rangel from Tabor, she gave the key keynote. They actually did this program in Newton Public Schools, and she had a lot of success with that. And so she kind of kicked it off and encouraged everybody to to have, a, you know, have, have this be the first step in a, in a kind of an ongoing partnership. Uh, I think it went pretty well. Um, Councilman McCarty was there, too, I think enjoyed it. I wish there would have been more students, but yeah, I, I thought it was a really good program. I talked to some business people who worked there. They said they'd like to go there next year. Yeah. So I think the idea is to kind of build it. They had a really big panel and I think we, if we could split it out and do more if we had more students. I so. thought it was really good. That yeah. Really there was some really good and there was some really good advice. People told their stories about how they got where they were. There were some really interesting ones I didn't know. Um and so it was really good. Um, so this is kind of the first thing in a multi-year partnership. Felt like it went pretty well. Had some good momentum there. Actually had a pretty nice article in the um, um, Marion Record about it as well. Uh, Eric Meyer participated on the panel. So um, it was it was pretty good. Uh, fire station appropriation request. Uh, I got encouraged by Grace Green, who's Congressman Letourner's uh, main person here in, in, uh, in Kansas in this region uh, to submit a, a funding request for allocations. So they're doing allocations now. Um, earmarks is what it used to be called. It's what it is now still, but <laughs> they don't call it that anymore. Uh, so put an $8 million funding request for that. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Um, we're just kind of, I was encouraged that they were encouraging us to apply. So put it in there and we'll see how it goes. Who knows? I mean, it's subject to a lot of things at the federal level, but it goes, it would go through rural development. So that's kind of the program we had targeted to use anyway for a loan, if that was something we wanted to do. Uh, we have talked with uh, Sheldon Architects about uh, potentially doing a design for us. And I think we're going to enter an agreement with them, a not to exceed uh, agreement to do some design work for us. Um, and then we're also talked with Cody Nelson from Nelson Fowles, uh, local builder. And I think we're going to have, I think we're going to get, get mo moving on having a more formal proposal put together and have a really good straight idea of what the costs are. So our committee is going to meet again here with both uh, Cody and, and uh, the new architect and, We'll hopefully have some some good progress moving forward on that. Um, let's see, hospital zoning request. That's going to be in front of the planning commission in April. Uh, just so you know about that. Um, the way we've kind of drawn it up is that there would be a specific hospital zoning district. Um, somebody could come in and, and want to be a part of that district, but they would have to go through the application process for zoning. So there would be an opportunity for everybody to kind of reflect on that and, and figure if that's the right decision for the community. Um, I would say that the the uh, the hospital or the clinic down here got purchased uh, at the sheriff's sale by the bank to clear the liens on it. So um, 
I think they're going to move forward with whatever. And I heard, heard a couple comments from them that they were still thinking about pursuing it as an active clinic. Uh, it's actually built to be kind of a small hospital, which is against our zoning regulations, which we told them from the beginning that that was not going to work. Um, I don't I don't know what they're what they anticipate that to be or that they're anticipating some sort of change. Um, I don't think it would be a great idea to do any kind of variance for that. So um, that is a potential issue on the horizon, too. But we are talking hospital zoning uh, here in April. So uh, we're making that something we're working on. Uh, parks improvements, just to follow up on some of the things that we've saw a lot of we always get a lot of projects from the senior government class on parks and recreation stuff. So Jerry and I have been working on some of those. Uh, we are going to be doing the the bathroom remodels. Uh, that was one that came up, I think, last year and this year, too. Um, so that's something we're working on. We got some pretty good pricing on that. Uh, there's a couple of things with the Memorial Park that bathroom that we need to figure out as far as structurally what we could do. Uh, we do have a price for a new water fountain in the park, which is one that they brought up. I think it'd be, um, it's a little different than what they proposed, but I think it would work pretty well. Uh, and I think we've got a plan for that. Uh, we've got a, we're going to be painting the shelters and doing staining on the deck at the scout house, which needs to be done. It was supposed to be done last year. We just couldn't get it in in the time frame. Uh, we've got a replacement swing set that still needs to be installed, mulch replenished. Uh, we're looking at that parking lot request too, and seeing how we can do that. Um, so just to let you all know that those things are in the hopper we're working on, but we'll definitely have the remodels of the bathrooms done for the state tournament out of the complex for sure. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're kind of moving forward on some of the other things too. It's when you do it, all the installation and stuff internally, it's kind of hard to get that scheduled with all the other work, but we're making that a priority. So, uh, it's something we're going to be moving forward on. Um, I want to remind everybody that sanitation cleanup week is April 22 through 24. So uh, there's information going out right now uh, on the city's Facebook page. We'll have it on the website too. Um, that actually happens on your pickup day for trash. So if your day is Tuesday, your cleanup day will be Tuesday. Uh, there's pretty specific guidelines. Yeah. No, I was just saying, sweet. Yeah. Uh, there's pretty specific guidelines. I have been, have been asked specifically to remind everybody that there's no grass grass clippings, uh, we don't take those, and we're, you're not actually supposed to put them in your trash cart either. Uh, we've been having some issues with the transfer station; uh, they don't like it when we do that, and so um, we're, we're trying to remind everybody not to do that. Uh, it's on the thing, but it you know it's on your can, but don't do it, please. Um, so clean up though all the big stuff. You can bring that out. We'll pick it up. We'll, we'll go around that week and do that with loaders and. All kinds of other things so that should be good uh the golf out the golf clubhouse renovations are basically done there's some touch up to be done to be done but they're um looking pretty good the deck is finished we're going to come out and do the sales the shade sales next week uh there's some painting that needs to be done and a couple of fixture things in the bathroom but it all looks pretty good i went and looked at it today looks great i think we should have like open house or something uh to celebrate that first tournament is actually this weekend um, so, and it is completely full. They actually have one too many teams. So, um, things are moving forward at the golf, in the golf world too. Uh, Hat Construction, Ash and Grand. I don't know if you remember that we approved this project. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be, supposed to be started around Thanksgiving, but then, uh, they got delayed because of weather and then the schedule got delayed. Um, but they are going to begin that in the next two weeks. So that'll be finished up here by the end of April. Um, and then I mentioned Sheldon Architecture is going on for the, um, the fire station project. So that's all I have, sir. Hey, a lot going on. Any questions? <laughs> all right. Uh, we are now at our final opportunity for public comment. Is there anybody that would like to address the council? Okay. Hearing none, we will now move to council comments. Councilman Wilkins? Don't have anything. Councilman McCarty? That's somebody... Talk to me, and they said they'd like to see if the city could maybe pull patch with a blade or something uh, from Third Street to Grand on Cedar Street by the old. Oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad there. It's pretty rough. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the areas we need to replace. I know it needs replaced. Yeah, it needs to be replaced. But yeah, we can we can look at that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Councilman By? Uh, flooring at Dale's. I know we they yeah. were awarded that mm -hmm. grant. Yep. Do we have a time 
frame on one. Uh, they've ordered material. Good. So, whenever Stewart gets in, I guess I don't know. Uh, I know they had some structural stuff they had to do too, sure. had to go in the basement and fix a few things. But um, the way I understand how they're going to do that is they're not going to shut down. Do That's you? what Dale was kind of. Okay. Yeah, they're going to try to do it and keep open, which I'm skeptical on, but yeah, hey, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's your business. You do what you need to do. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to try to do it that way. Um, okay. I don't think it'll take too long either, but they got it all ordered. Actually, we if you in the uh, appropriations, there was a, a, the first disbursement from that through the seed grant, uh, 12500 So okay. That's it. Okay, is there any other business that needs to come before the council? Hearing none, I declare our meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Got a lot done in a fairly short amount of time, so I appreciate yeah. it.